Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Erwin Mitchell webinar. It's great to have so many of you join us today, and wherever you are in your home studies, in your bedrooms, in your kitchens, thank you for welcoming, welcoming us into your homes today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Zara Fabani, and I'm a family law partner here at Erwin Mitchell, and I'm joined today by Hayley Trim, who is our national professional support lawyer. This webinar is going to be talking about separate separated parenting during lockdown, during this really difficult time. And it's part of a series of webinars that Erwin Mitchell are delivering. We want to reach out to our clients, communities, our contacts, colleagues, our friends, to give help, support, and guidance during this really, really difficult time. So you can ask questions throughout the webinar live, and we'll try and answer as many of them as we can. And if we don't answer them, we will come back to you. And this webinar is being recorded, so if you miss some of it, you'll be able to listen to it later on. So first of all, I think what's really important is looking at the law. We need to go back to basics when we're thinking about how to deal with our children and how to deal with difficult situations. So Hayley, can you, can you help with that in the first instance? Let's go back to basics. Tell us what the law is at this moment in time. Sure. Um, morning, everybody. So much of our day-to-day -day lives are somewhat up in the air. Um, there's been an awful lot of change. Um, the law has stayed the same. The legal position hasn't changed. So if a court is looking at how a child should spend their time, um, which parent they should um, spend most of their time with, or whether they should divide their time more equally, um, the situation hasn't changed. The court will prioritize the welfare of that child. Um, there is a presumption that the, the best interest of the child is, is served by having a relationship with both of their parents, unless that would be a risk to the child. Uh, and it, it's well established that it is preferable for a child to have a, a good relationship with both of their parents. That doesn't mean it has to be equal time. There's no fixed way that any arrangement should look. Um, it could be close to 50-50, or it might just be every other weekend, or it really depends on each individual family's situation and, and, and what works for the child. So if a court's looking at a uh, it will look at a whole range of factors, uh, and they will include the wishes and feelings of the child themselves, uh, the child's needs, their physical, emotional, and educational needs. Uh, and how capable each of the parents are of meeting those needs. And it's always very specific to the particular child, so any relevant characteristics of that child, um, their age, sex, and background, and, and anything else that's relevant. Importantly, um, obviously, the, the court wants to keep the child out of harm's way, um, and in this particular situation that we find ourselves in now, that takes on a bit of a new dimension. Absolutely, and, that, and, and we've seen some guidance around what people should do in this situation, haven't we, Hayley? And can you take us through that guidance and tell us what that looks like? Sure. So, I mean, it, it's obviously important to remember um, that, that both parents have um, parental responsibility for their child in most cases, not every case, but, but in most cases, um, both parents have, have equal parental responsibility. Um, and, and that means that they, they need to agree um, on major decisions in the child's life. But um, you know, in, in this particular situation, against this background, that this legal background we have of welfare, um, promotion of co-parenting, um, we now have the, the government's guidance to stay at home. Um, and clearly, that's going to impact on uh, a lot of contact arrangements. Um, if we can only go out for exercise or to buy essential items or for, for those key workers who are still going to work. Um, then, then should we really be moving children between households? And this is where we've, we've now got some guidance. Um, the government has made a specific exception uh, to the stay-at-home rule for children who are being moved between their parents' homes um, for, for contact arrangements. So the stay-at-home guidance of itself isn't an obstacle um, to, to contact continuing. But what we do have, obviously, um, is the guidance around quarantining. Uh, so if someone in a household is, is showing symptoms, there are vulnerable people in a home, then that could impact on, on what happens to, to a child's arrangement. So what we have um, in terms of specific guidance that's come out in, in this situation um, is guidance from the president of the family division, who's the most senior family judge in the country, uh, and also from CAFCAS, uh, 
Uh, so from the body that um, advises court in terms of children's welfare, the, the Children and Family Court Advisory and Support Service. Um, and so these two pieces of guidance really stress that um, arrangements for children so far as possible um, should stay the same. So um, if there is a court order in place, then, then that order should uh, continue to be complied with unless there is a very good reason not to do so. Um, so, Hayley, and around that, we're finding, we're finding that people in that situation with court orders are actually really, really struggling. So, it, we're saying you stick to them, but in reality and in practice, is that, is that, can, that, can we do that? You know, for example, when you're doing pick up and drop off from school or from a third party or from a petrol station, you know, the reality of that is quite different in practice, isn't it? Absolutely, it is. Um, and at this time, more than ever, we're going to have to be more flexible um, with, with what we do with our children's arrangements. Because as you say, the schools are closed. The, the usual standard type arrangements where one parent drops off in the morning and the other parent picks up in the afternoon, that's just not going to happen. Um, so, so those kind of arrangements are going to have to be adapted. Now, if you've got a very specific court order, um, what, the, what the president says in his guidance um, is that you, you don't need to go back to court to change your general arrangements. Um, in, in this situation, you can, you can agree something, you can agree how it's going to work for you as a family um, and, and just put that in place. Now, it, it's advisable to put it in writing, um, to have a record, even if it's just by text message or email, um, just so everyone's absolutely clear what the situation is. Um, yeah, and isn't that no just an you're so right. If people can agree and communicate, and I know we're going to talk about that a, a bit later as well, that's great and that's an ideal situation. But I mean, a lot of questions have come through, and I think a, a lot of queries that a lot of family lawyers are seeing is people aren't agreeing. I mean, this is a, such a stressful time for everybody. It's another stress where people aren't agreeing. Now, what are we seeing in those situations? Well, unfortunately, in, in, in those situations, um, you know, in, in so far as you can't agree, um, it, it's as it always was. Um, the, the only solution really is, is to take it to a court. Um, now, the difficulty with, with that at the moment um, is that you know, the, the courts are still functioning. They are um, providing hearings by, um, by, by remote hearing, so by video, by telephone. Um, but it, it's not going to be easy to get a hearing quickly. Um, if, if the situation isn't really quite urgent. Um, and the court is, is sort of tied by, by the guidance that, um, that, that we have in place. So unless you can produce strong evidence that someone um, is not um, telling the truth uh, about a situation, um, then it, it, it's going to be hard for a court to make a decision to say, well, that child should definitely move to that place or not. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think difficult. different courts are dealing with it in different ways, aren't they, really? I mean, I think you're right. Court should, I mean, even pre-COVID, we've always said court should be a last resort. So even now, we would say the same thing. So I know that in our team, solicitors are liaising with other solicitors and say, come on, let's have a practical conversation around this and let's try and agree something. I think the other thing that's quite interesting that people are doing a lot at this moment in time that lawyers are advocating more so than ever, which I believe is a good thing, is alternative dispute resolution. So that if people, if you're thinking, oh, my only avenue is court, so solicitors are advising people, why don't you look to mediation? Why don't you look to arbitration, whereby not using the court setting, but other professionals as independent people to try and help us get a judgment call on this? Um, you know, and we advocate those areas, don't we, Hayley? Those are things that we Absolutely. really look upon. Uh, absolutely. You know, in, in the first instance, um, you know, if parents can't talk to each other, and obviously that's, that's the, the real hope, is that parents can communicate directly. But there are lots of different avenues for, for trying to reach um, agreement. And that might just be a family member. It might be a friend who can just help um, get, get some messages backwards and forwards when, when two people are struggling. Um, but if not, then, you know, the, there are options around, um, around mediation. Mediation is happening remotely. The mediators are, are there and able to use um, Zoom or, or other options for, um, uh, for, for remote uh, mediation. Arbitration um, is, is another option, as, as you've said. Um, and, and just to solicitors, so talking to your solicitor and, and, 
and that asking them, you know, what, what's the best way to, to approach this with with someone who, you know, this is a difficult situation for a lot of people, and people aren't necessarily, um, you know, able to receive messages in, in a way that, that they might otherwise have been, because, you know, people no. are, are struggling. Absolutely. And what, I mean, I think we've got to, we've got to accept, haven't we, and acknowledge that some people are abusing the situation, some people are using COVID as a reason to, to purposefully stop contact. I mean, and pre-COVID, we would have seen other reasons why people were trying to purposefully stop contact. And I think people are using it right now, which is a really, really sad situation to find ourselves in. Because I think the reality is that we've all got to think about is that we as adults are finding this situation tough for, for a, a, a myriad of reasons. Children are also finding it tough, and the mental health of our children and ourselves is so important. So using this situation is just something that is very sad and upsetting to see. And I do believe, and we've got examples, you know, from our national team up and down the country, where people are abusing it and we are returning it to court. Um, you know, judges are being quite, you know, they're, they're being very serious, aren't they? They're taking that very, very seriously and saying this is not acceptable. And you know, they're looking to give very strong guidance around this situation. Because it's not an acceptable situation, is it, for anybody to abuse this? I mean, people are... Absolutely aren't. not. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, and, and as you say, it's very sad when, when people do that. Um, people do it when when they... We haven't got situations like, like this, unfortunately. They, they do this for the... Um, and, um, you know, it, it has to... Um, it, it has to be dealt with, with firmly. But sure. as as I've as I've mentioned, you know, that there, there can be at, at the moment in particular with with some of the constraints on the court, um, some some evidential difficulties. Yeah. Um, but what one parent might see as a, a short term win in perhaps using this situation to have their child with them for longer, um, might well backfire in due course if because it's this comes back before a court in the future, um, then courts are going to be looking at the whole context of the, of the situation. Um, and, and they could be quite critical if, if, if it really looks like someone's taken advantage of the situation. Rather than, you know, some people are having to come to really difficult decisions um, because of health reasons, because they are trying to protect someone who's vulnerable. And for those people who genuinely want to promote contact with parents, but at the same time, they're, they're really feeling like they're, they're conflicted. Um, you know, for them, this is a really difficult decision to take rather than someone who's taking advantage of it. Um, Absolutely. So I think the court, court is likely to come down quite, quite hard. Yeah. If you're taking unilateral action without communicating properly and without really offering some genuine um, quality contact along the lines of, you know, video contact that's done really well, not just sort of, you know, a, a, a token gesture, um, but then all of that is going to form part of the context in due course. Yeah, I mean, thank God for the technology we've got. I mean, it would, it would go back, you know, years. There wouldn't be other alternative ways to communicate. But, you know, Skype, FaceTime, and I know it's really difficult because if you have a really small child and you're isolating and the other parent is not seeing them, it's very, very difficult. But you can send pictures, you can send videos, you can do some engagement online, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. One question that we had, which I thought was really interesting as well, is where somebody said, if I actually read out the question, what can you do when a parent refuses to have contact with the child during lockdown, therefore upsetting normal routine, routine at a very upsetting time? I mean, again, this is something that we see outside of COVID. You know, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. There are some parents who, for whatever reason, good or bad, say, I'm not going to see this child right now. You know, that's not what I want to do. And so some people will have said, we're in lockdown. We don't, we know we're not doing this. And I think one thing we have to accept is that parent, one, some of those parents who are making that decision are genuinely afraid, genuinely concerned. So actually putting a child with them might not be the right thing to do immediately. And I think that's something that, you know, we wouldn't be advocating going anywhere near a court on that because you, you just can't force people in this situation. It, it's very sad and upsetting. But what I would advise people to do in that scenario is, is exactly what you've been talking about, Hilly, is communicate, find alternative ways, do some FaceTime. Um, if you're, you know, just make sure 
the connection is still there and speak to your children. Be honest with them as much as you can. You know, I've seen parents talking to their children and saying, we're not seeing so-and-so at the moment. We're not seeing granny and granddad. We're not seeing your friends. Because a lot of people are poorly out there at the moment. So, you know, we've been told we need to stay at home and we're just going to go for our walks and, and that, that's going to be good. And we're, this is not going to happen forever, but this is what we've got to do right now. But we're going to do some FaceTime. So have some honesty around the piece, but then have a plan. Definitely. Hey, uh, yeah. So, I mean, and so if we move on to talk about, Hayley, uh, some of the tools and resources that we've seen out there for parents and for children, actually, to support them through this really difficult time. I mean, you know, being at home, trying to work and having two, three, four children in your house, maybe even a newborn, is incredibly difficult. Even in the strongest and happiest of relationships, that's difficult, let alone when you're separated parents. So the one thing that I've been advocating a lot to clients is um, spending some time looking at coaching and counselling. There are so many remote opportunities available to people. And I would say that counsellors and coaches are really, really busy right now. And it's a real positive way to spend your time, even if it's just for you as an individual, regardless of whether you're a single parent, um, a separated parent, or a happily married parent. Taking some time out for you and having a conversation with somebody independent to say, this is how you're feeling, and reaching out and asking for help and for tools, that's something that we've talked about quite a lot, isn't it, Hayley? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I think it's, it's essential. You know, the, we, we have these, you know, re remote ability to um, meet up with our friends online, um, chat to family, um, and, and put it, putting those kind of things into, into the diary and into the, into the day are, are great. Um, but I think a little bit of reflection, like you say, Zara, on on how we're feeling and acknowledging that this is a, a difficult situation and that we we might just need a little bit of extra help. Um, that's not a bad thing at all um, and, and can be really, really constructive. Um, you know, and and I, I've, heard people, I've heard people doing some, some really great stuff with grandparents who are really missing their children. They can't be teachers. And I think that's something that I'd really like to get across as well. My husband's a teacher and he's spending time in school and he's spending time doing Google Classrooms at home. And he's taking a lot of calls from parents who are saying, this is a nightmare. You know, I can't, I can't do this. I can't get them to sit down and do the work. I don't understand the work. And, you know, my husband is saying, it's okay. You're not teachers. We have trained to do this. And if you can't quite get your head around this, don't worry about it. Do something else. Go outside, do something else, and, and do what you can do. Don't beat yourself up and don't have battles with your children over it because it's not going to help any of you. And I've got some, you know, we said we'd share some tips and stuff that we, we could do. I've had got some great examples of what I've seen. I know some people who have said, can't do it, can't do the teaching piece, we'll do a little bit, but literally cannot do a whole school day. So I know people who have, so for example, um, somebody who is, is good with his hands and he, his trade is, is woodwork, really. So he's been doing life skills with his children and they've gone outside and they've built a tree house from scratch and it's taken a lot of time. You know, and I know another parent who said, right, okay, out of this, my child is not going to be anywhere progressed in English, maths or anything, but they're going to be able to bake. They're going to be able to find their way around the kitchen and be able to prepare a meal for themselves and for others. I think that's fantastic. Life skills are just as important as academic teaching. And it's just, you know, I think, Hayley, you and I talked about this. We need to be more innovative. We need to be more creative. I mean, you looked at some online tools as well, didn't you, Hayley? Definitely. I mean, there's some really great stuff out there. Um, if I wasn't so busy, I, thought I, could, I could spend ages on this stuff. I was so impressed. Um, you know, everything from, um, you know, museums that are, that are doing um, activities and art galleries to BBC, there's coding, crafts, games, creative writing, loads and loads of stuff. Um, there's one particular site that I came across which brought all this stuff together because I think there's so much, it's so diverse. Um, but this one particular site kind of put everything all in one place and, and gave all, all the options together. It's called Home Huddle, H O M E H U D D L E dot org. Um, and it's, just, it's, it's actually a couple of mums that have put it together in the situation where, you know, they, they were trying to find things for, for the kids to do. And, and they came across so much and they just brought it all together. So I, I really do recommend that. In terms, I think, of communication tools, and I know, I know this is really um, 
this is really hard, particularly for younger children, um, because they're going to need supervision. Uh, they're you know, going to need help setting things up. Um, but I think no matter what you use, whether it's FaceTime, Skype, WhatsApp, as long as both parents are supporting it and making an effort, it's a case of working out how those sessions can can really be looked forward to by both the child and the parent. Um, and perhaps having some kind of ongoing activity, whether it's a game or something you're learning together, it can really help kind of keep the flow going and, and keep looking forward to the next session. Rather than yeah. being more sort of individual and chunk. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think the other thing that uh, I've come across as well, I mean, you know, people are doing some really good online exercise, which is great, because there are lots of children out there some children who have special needs or some children who have behavioural difficulties who, or some children who just have excess energy, which is basically all of them. And so having your walk a day is really important. Setting up an obstacle course in the garden is really important. Doing those things for your children, but don't forget yourself. I mean, I, I know a parent who, she, you know, a full, happily married, full-time um, housewife and mum, is has been massively struggling with having two primary school children at home and trying to go through all of this and was really struggling with her daughter's behavior and a daughter who thrived from the school environment who thrived from her extracurricular activities but what she realized was it was her she hadn't had time to think plan prepare and so she you know she spoke to her husband and you know her husband is going into the office because he has to but he um could do different hours and she said right what I need to do is I need to get up on my own and go for my run go for my exercise and just have some me time so that I'm ready and set up for the day now if you're a single parent I know that that is impossible and I feel for you and, and, it, and it's much more difficult I get that but if you are in a couple who are job sharing at home and sharing the time that you can spend in work and the time that you can spend with your children be kind to each other and give yourself some me time, both of you, whether that be exercise or just a 15 minute break on your own to get your head together. I think that's really, really important. And the other thing we were talking about, weren't we, Hayley, is planning. Having You've got to do some planning around this. And now, sometimes the plans can go out the window. Sometimes the schedule and routine can go out the window. But I've seen people who have created for smaller children a timetable that is drawn and put on the fridge so the child can go up to it and think, right, okay, that's what we're doing next. Um, and I think people have been beating themselves up about too much technology. Well, we're all having too much technology right now. We're all getting um, uh, video com weary now. Nobody makes phone calls anymore. Everybody wants to see each other, we, we, which is good in many ways. And I think some people are worried about too much tech time for their children. But I think sometimes you're going to have to relax those rules, rules as well to keep everybody sane. Sometimes the path of least resistance can be the best one to take. So. I think give yourselves a break is what we were saying to each other, weren't we, Hayley, in, in that in scenario? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, be, be kind to yourself. And as, as you were saying, Zara, you know, we, we can't all be teachers and parents and workers and everything all at once. And, um, you know, th there is a limit to what, what human beings can do. And just, you know, yeah, give, give yourself a break. And the other thing is, as well, we've had some other questions, a couple of other questions. Well, one other question we've particularly had, and I assume it's from the guardian of a child, about a three-year-old where um, the government guidelines are great, they're saying, for the general population, but where people can't agree. Um, and Hayley, we've talked about that. If people fundamentally can't agree, you can look at alternative dispute resolution. But if you need third parties to be involved, looking at approaching a solicitor, and what we're doing more and more in this environment quite rightly is speaking picking up the phone using solicitors as your advocate um and talking to each other because there is a way forward in this environment i know people are digging their heels in in some instances and they can't break an impasse but you can and we can help you and we can find solutions and that's what lawyers in all different law firms in family law that's what we're trying to do is find you some solutions to carry you through this really, really difficult time. Another question that I had, which I thought might be helpful, pre-COVID, people who had not seen their children for whatever reason, breakdown in relationship, in communication, for whatever reason, people had not seen their children, they were just about to start an application, and now they've gone, well, now in COVID, is this the right time to do it? What's gonna to happen to my application? So Hayley, we know, and you've touched upon the fact that if there are urgent issues, the judges are having hearings and they are dealing with them, but what if it's not such a, an imminent urgent issue. It's something that's been sitting there for a while. 
Um, and, you know, what, what do you think around that piece about issuing the application? Because the courts are going to come out of this with a bit of a backlog. Is it right to get your application in? So at least you're sitting in a queue. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the courts are still taking applications. So if, if it's an application about child arrangements, um, then they can be made online, those, those applications. So an individual can, can put in their application. And, and online applications are being dealt with by the court. Um, in terms of, of hearings and things being listed, um, the, the court will, will list an initial hearing, um, and that may well take place um, by, by telephone or video. Um, but it, it may not take, take place very quickly. It might end up getting adjourned. Um, but at the same time, it, you know, the system has, has started, um, and, and you should get some, some contact from Kafka, um, who may be able to help and have input with you. Um, and, and as I say, you know, if, if you can talk to your solicitor, um, and, and sometimes just being in the court process can help move things along a little bit because it helps to focus minds. Absolutely. Um, and uh, at the same time, as, as hopefully, you know, you can, you can continue trying try to communicate, trying to mediate um, and, and find a way forward that way. Yeah, and I think, you know, a key message that we should get across as well is if you are not seeing your child right now, for whatever reason, and you need help to move that forward and navigate it, reach out, reach out, look online, look online at the resources, speak to a solicitor, speak to us, speak to a mediator, speak to a counsellor. There is a way forward. If you are not seeing your child because of COVID or nothing to do with COVID and there were issues before, people have got a lot of thinking time now, people who are maybe not working, people who have been furloughed. They've got a lot of thinking time. And, and if you're reflecting, more often than not, the law will say, as you started with Hayley, it is important for a child, every child, to have a relationship with both their parents. It is important. Um, so we want to help you with that. We advocate that. So do reach out. Don't just sit there and suffer in silence and, and just worry about it. There will be things that we can help you with and that we can do. So please do talk to us. I think that's really important. Um, in, in terms of other things that we've seen and, and other questions that have come up, we are talking specifically today um, about um, contacting environments, but there have been questions that I've seen on Twitter as well about child maintenance in these environments. And Hayley, I think you and I talked about this before we got on because I mentioned this to you. I mean, child maintenance effectively should stay the same. Uh, that, that's the first premise. But the reality of the situation is if your income has changed dramatically and there is an unaffordability, then you need to seek advice. We wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't say make changes without taking advice, giving notice, and having an understanding around that. Would you, Haley, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like like any form of maintenance, really. Um, you know, if if it becomes unaffordable for some reason, um, then then you're going to need to try and. and and agree a variation in the first instance, and, and if it can't be agreed, then there may need to be, um, if, if it's court-ordered maintenance, a court application, and, and if, it, if it's through the, the CMS, the Child Maintenance Service, um, then looking at, at a review of, of the maintenance calculation. Um, it, it, it's hard to say, you know, in each specific case will ha we'll have its own um, factors to look at. Uh, but, but generally speaking, um, in terms of child maintenance, this, you know, this is a really difficult time financially for a lot of people. And there may have to be some, some reviews of, of money that's being paid. Yeah, no, it is a tough time. And there's a lot to think about. You know, people are under a lot of pressure to think about so many different things. And, and I know it's really, really hard. Uh, but whenever you do it, even if it's 5 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning, and you're waking up and you're thinking about things, and people say, you know, leave a, a notebook by your desk and write these things down. Try and find some time to have a little think about it, and then do go online. I mean, most people do that in the first instance. Go online and look. There is support out there. And I think we as a community at Irwin Mitchell, that's what we're trying to get across, is that we're here to support you, and there are other support networks out there. And we take a very holistic approach. So. You know, if you don't know how to find a coach or a counsellor or a mediator, we can help you contact us, and we are very happy to signpost you. I think that's an important message to get across. 
Um, Hayley, in terms of the law, is there any other aspects that we should be thinking about at this moment in time? I mean, you're seeing in lots of different areas of family law, regular guidance, aren't you really coming down? Is that easy for people to access and look at? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been an awful lot of guidance coming out. Um, it, it feels, I think, from, from the family lawyer's perspective, that there's been guidance coming out every five minutes from, from the courts and, and different guidance from, from different courts uh, uh, all over the country. But um, there, there are certain um, resources where the, the main guidance is, uh, is, is all being kept together. So um, Resolution have a page um, where, where they're keep, keeping us, us up to date. Um, and, um, and so Hayley, lots, lots, Hayley, Hayley, sorry, to interrupt you. sorry to interrupt you. Lots of people won't know what resolution is. Could you just explain uh, that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Re resolution is um, is an organisation of, of family lawyers who um, who promote a non-confrontational um, approach to, um, to to separation and, and divorce, and, and particularly in relation to children. So um, it's it's an organisation that, that we at Owen Mitchell are um, are members of. And, uh, and a lot of family lawyers are as well. Um, so yeah, that, their website is just um, resolution.org.uk, and that's uh, that's got some good information on it. That's great. That's really good. Now, something that we haven't touched on, which is a really difficult, sensitive area, but um, we d we didn't want to, to to not talk about it really, is that there are some people out there who are feeling not just the pressure of COVID, but that are feeling trapped because of domestic violence situations. And that is frightening for a lot of people who are feeling so out of control and have nowhere to turn. Um, again, people who are in that situation, again, there is help out there. I mean, I think people who are in urgent situations, Hayley, you looked at this for us, didn't you, in terms of how they can access, if it was very, very urgent, uh, immediate help, how would they do that, Hayley? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we appreciate that um, for, for some people, they may already be separated and still having to live in the same home, or um, or they may be living with with um, an abusive situation. Um, if if you are in a situation of um, of danger, then you, you dial nine 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 in the normal way. Um, but if your abuser is still in the home and you can't speak, then you just hit five twice, so five five on your phone, um, and that will alert the emergency services to, to the fact that you're in um, in danger, and and they will send. Um, help to the location, uh, so you don't need to worry about trying to communicate um, on the phone at that time. So that's really helpful to know. It is um, helpful to know, because that was something I didn't know. But in terms of domestic violence situations, we are still seeing um, urgent court applications to deal with what's called occupation orders, where the court can define what happens within the home and how the home is shared. And the police are I mean, I think I have to say all our services are being incredible, uh, all key workers, NHS, the police. I think the police are doing everything they can to help and assist, particularly in domestic violence situations um, and reaching out to anybody, anybody in that situation is incredibly important. And that's right, isn't it, Hayley? And that's what really what we're advocating. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the police, I know, are, um, are incredibly busy with this. Um, and they are taking um, the situation very seriously. Um, from a civil law point of view, um, Family Law Act applications, so um, applications for um, non-molestation orders um, and, and for occupation orders, as you mentioned, Zara, to, to regulate what happens in relation to a property, um, they, they can be made um, by email, um, and the court will hear those remotely by telephone. Uh, so, so those things are going ahead. Um, there, there hasn't been um, a stop to those or a delay with those. The other thing, while I'm talking to you, I'm looking at Twitter at the same time. We're multicasting in these environments. <laughs> I'm looking at things, uh, questions coming up. And, and again, you touched on this earlier, uh, Hayley, but it might be helpful to uh, people listening. Um, older children, so 11 plus, who are basically almost being defiant in this scenario about where they're going to visit and who they're not going to visit in terms of parents, other parents or separated parents. That's difficult, isn't it, about, you know, you, you touched on wishes and feelings. Going back to court with a child who is around that age, um, what, 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 what would you advise, what would we advise around that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's always difficult with older children because they have a tendency, particularly when they get towards teenagers, to, to vote with their feet anyway. Um, 
but at the end of the day they are they are still children um, we as adults are responsible for them um, and it is important that they're, they're kept safe um, as a priority um, but we have to listen to what they have to say and their views will be given weight by a court in due course um, depending on the maturity and their understanding and the influence that each parent has on them will be taken into account as well because children have a tendency to align with a parent um, and, and that will be looked at to see whether that's um, a reason, the reason for that is, is a, a positive one or, or perhaps less positive. Yeah, no, we do see that often, don't we? we do, sadly, we see, do see some children coached um, to say something, to align with the parent. And sometimes it's, it's coaching on purpose, but sometimes it's coaching almost by accident. You know, I know parents when I'm saying, you know, are you putting your view on that child? And they're saying, no, I'm, I'm absolutely not. But sometimes they are, but doing it subconsciously. And I think we've just got to be more aware and more attuned to what we're saying and how we're delivering messages. Um, and it comes back to that communication piece, which is what we're doing right now. We're trying to share and communicate in the best way possible. Um, in terms of any other questions, um, I think we've we've talked about the, the medical reasons and what to do if parents can't agree. I think the other thing that's come up that I can see on Twitter is, um, for us, obviously, as an organisation, we have you, Haley, who can um, look at guidance that's being delivered and emailed and decipher it. What about lay people? I mean, are they still able to ring the courts uh, because the courts would often point people in the right direction? What, what about that situation? How are lay people going to navigate this? Um, you can still telephone your local court. Um, you may have uh, a longer than usual wait to, to get to speak to a human being. Um, but um, there is information online and, and that's probably going to be the first port of call. Um, and, and looking at, um, at, at the information that's available um, online through, through various organisations. Um, you know, the, the HMCTF website, um, so that's the, um, the court website, they're putting guidance out there. Um, and most of the guidance is um, um, in, in straightforward language. Um, but, but if in doubt, um, then, then do take do take some, some legal advice and, and do talk to a solicitor. And the other thing that I can see a question uh, on Twitter again is the fact that some parents are so afraid to let their children go for contact because they're worried about the child not coming back, uh, particularly if all of a sudden there's a self-isolating situation. What about those situations, Hayley? What do you think in that scenario? It's I mean, that's hard, a tough one, isn't it? it? It's a really tough one, because if there's genuine medical reasons, it's tough. Yeah, and, and no one wants to see a child being put at risk or, or anybody else being put at risk. So it, it's a balancing act between, you know, is, is this a genuine situation? Um, in, in which case, well, you might have to sit out the quarantine period and, and wait for it to be okay. Um, if it's not a genuine situation, well, do you know that? Do you have evidence of that? Um, and, and realistically, what is the court going to be able to do in, in what's going to be a finite space of time if you're talking about a two-week quarantine or a one-week quarantine? So it's, um, um, it's a balance. Yeah. And what about, um, Hayley, what about shielding? Tell people about that, that concept of shielding and how that's affecting um, this situation. I mean, that's particularly difficult if you've got a vulnerable person in your house who, um, or if, if, the, if the parent themselves um, have, have health issues and they, they need to um, not be in contact with, with anybody else during um, the whole period of, of this lockdown. Um, that, that's a significant period of time that, that needs to be accounted for. And I think in those situations, it really is going to be a case of, of making the most possible effort to continue relationships um, on, a, on a remote basis, think as creatively as possible. Um, is there any option for a even a wave through a window just as a sort of, you know, uh, yeah. a one-off kind of, um, you know, the, the, the other parent is still present. Um, it's, it's kind of maintaining those, um, those relationships in, in whatever way possible. Yeah, and it's interesting, you say that wave through the window. That has been a really important contact situation for a number of people, even with uh, grandparents or 
a, a grandparent living on their own, a, a drive-by way through the window is making the world of difference to people. And I think, you know, in this situation, it's about being kind to yourselves, but small things making a bit big difference. Um, we've talked a lot about communication today, and for us, that is key. Communication and finding a way forward and reaching out for help. Those, those are the messages that we really want to get across to you today. Um, Hayley, is there anything else that we haven't covered in terms of the law or in terms of what, what we think that would help parents in this situation? I don't think so. I think, I mean, we've, you just mentioned again, communication being of vital importance and one particular tool um, that parents might find useful um, and, and there are a number of different um, types of, um, and versions of, of this um, app. Uh, it's called Our Family Wizard, um, and it just helps with the communication um, between parents. It's a way of keeping everything in one place, um, of being absolutely 100% um, sure that you can trust um, what the other party is, is putting in their communication in terms of it not being um, faked. So you, um, it, it's absolutely secure, and um, and you can't sort of um, pretend you've sent a message that you haven't actually sent, or, or delete something after the event. Uh, so if if there is a lack of trust um, in this in this um, time when communication is so absolutely important, um, then that is one one thing to have a look at, and uh, and maybe think about communicating that way. No, and that's really good. And I know that the courts have, uh, when our family visit wizard has turned up in a court situation, it's actually being included and incorporated into court orders, uh, yeah. which is, is a really good point, actually. And what about a cost associated with that, Haley? Are you aware of the cost associated with that? Um, there is a small cost, I think. Um, I think that um, there are a small number that are um, available uh, free of charge if people have. Um, if they're on benefits, if they're um, struggling financially, um, and there are um, there's a, a relatively small cost. I think it's under a hundred pounds a year, something about eighty pounds a year um, for uh, for anybody else per per parent. And it could be worth its weight in gold in terms of I know um, our family team at Owen Mitchell have advocated this to clients, and we've had really really positive feedback. So that's really really helpful, um, Haley. Um, so really, um, I can't see that, that any more questions have come up now. So what I really can, Haley, can you see any more questions? Just in case. No, I don't I think there's anything come up. Yeah. Okay. So I think we just want to round this up really, and just to say, a thank you so much for joining us, and please do look on the um, Irwin Mitchell website and the Corona Hub. As I said at the beginning, we've got quite a lot of um, webinars out there on different topics that should help you, whether you're a client, a contact, one of our solicitors in other firms uh, that we're friends with, who, who, whoever you are, there might be something there to help you. So the last thing that both Haley and I would want to reach you with is don't suffer in silence. If you've got a problem, it's your problem. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. We are there to help you navigate life ups and downs. So do reach out and we will do everything that we can. And if you have any questions that we haven't answered, you can email us um, at events at Erwin Mitchell. And I believe that's on the last slide that will come up. Here we go, events at erwinmitchell.com. So Haley, thank you so much. Um, and to everybody else out there, it is a beautiful day. The sun is shining. So um, there, is, there is no better tonic than vitamin D for you and your families. So take care of yourselves. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for your time.